Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip and today I'm going to be discussing how I do my DIY sand filters and this is a large capacity filter. Instead of spending a lot of money on like a Berkey filter and those expensive filters that you put in them, I decided to go with a sand filter. I know Berkey's are a little bit better. This is a particulate matter filter. It will only take out the small little bits and pieces of stuff floating around in water. It will not take out chemical contamination it will not take out biological contamination. So if the water that you're putting in has, let's say, Giardia in it, water coming out is going to have Giardia in it. It's that simple. But it will get rid of a lot of the particulate matter in the water and give you a cleaner looking water. So if all you need to do is filter the water, this is a great option. Now there's a lot of videos out there that show you how to build a sand filter, but I do it a little bit differently and I'll show you why. So first off, let's get started what you need. You need a drill with a 7 8 drill bit. I know this one's bigger than this, but it does have a stop at 7 8 So you need some way to drill a 7 8 inch hole as well as a 2 inch hole. You'll also probably need a couple of wrenches to put this together. So let's go ahead and I'll set these aside. And we'll get started on what this is. There's two five gallon buckets. You can find these. They're food grade buckets. I found these at Home Depot just like this. I also got the lids. The lids are separate. I have one lid that is completely untouched. This is the only part that you are not going to modify. The second lid has a two inch hole in it. This is why you need a two inch hole saw. You probably could get by with cutting it out with a good pair of scissors or a pair of diagonals, something like that. But whatever you need to to get a two inch hole. Inside I have five buckets. And inside one of these buckets I have a brass valve with a three quarter to one half thread PVC adapter. We'll get to what all this is for later on. I have about a half pound of activated charcoal. I also have several homemade washers. This is actually what's called EPDM, which is the material that they use for flat roofs. Most people would call this a rubber roofing. I have several of these pieces that I simply cut out of a scrap that I, you know, since I work construction, I'm around this stuff, I could just pick this up. You know, little pieces like this are scrapped to the roofer, so I pick them up and do projects like this with them. I also have three 35 millimeter film canisters. If you want to use PVC pipe for this, you can. And I also have another three quarter to half threaded fitting into a, just a simple three quarter PVC coupler that's threaded and a piece of cloth. Inside here is about five and a half pounds of sand, four and a half pounds of small gravel, and four and a half pounds of large gravel. Those are the filtering elements. The two buckets. One of them has a 7 8 inch hole drilled near the bottom, not right exactly at the bottom because you need a little space between here and the bottom of the bucket. Two reasons, I'll get to that later. And the other bucket has a 7 8 hole right in the center. So I'm going to show you how I would assemble this if I needed to deploy it. The first thing I'm going to do is take my valve and my fitting and I'm going to put one of my rubber washers on both sides. And the reason I use these that I make out of flat roofing material is I've tried O-rings and they just squish out. They just deform so much you cannot get them to seal up properly. Now this is something that you will probably need the wrenches for. I don't think you're going to be able to get these tight enough to be waterproof to seal up this opening and that would be the reason you have the wrenches, but I'm not going to do that. This is just for demonstration. This bucket is now ready. Now, when you deploy this, you want this bucket up off the floor. You do not want this thing sitting right on the floor because you would have no way to get the water out. You would either have to set it on something 
or put it up on a table to where you can access the valve and get the water out of. But this bucket is ready. Now we're going to put the lid with the hole in it. And that bucket is now ready. The other bucket that has the hole in the bottom, we're going to do the same thing with our two pieces. And again, you might have to use tools to get these tight enough so they don't leak. And what this fitting is for is to make sure that the water you filter goes directly into this bucket. You don't just want to drill a hole because then the water will get all over the top of this lid and any contamination that's on this lid is going to go down into there. So you want this to where it slides right down into there and you can see that it keeps it from rolling around. Now we're ready to fill our bucket. Now I'm going to take this down off of here and remove this to make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing here. But we'll just pretend that this is sitting on top of the other bucket. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my three 35 millimeter film canisters and I'm going to put them in a triangular shape around that fitting that's in the bottom. And there's a very important reason for that. First off, it gets these buckets that I'm going to use for my filter uh, material, it gets them off the bottom because this is going to keep that from sitting flush on the bottom. So the first one I have, this is just one gallon ice cream containers, of course, there's nothing wrong with those, filled with a series of quarter inch holes in the bottom. These are going to hold the activated charcoal. Spread that around a little bit, set it right there in the middle. The next one is going to be my sand filter. Now, the problem is, is the holes that I have drilled in the sand, or in the bottom of this bucket, the sand will go through, even though they're very, very small holes. I think these are like a 32nd of an inch. The sand will get out of there. So I'm going to use a piece of cloth as a sieve to keep the sand in the bucket. And there is my sand filter. And I'm going to nest that right inside of the bucket that has the activated charcoal in it. And then I'm going to pull the, the uh, cloth into the bucket. I don't want it laying outside because water can then wick outside of that bucket and bypass the sand filter as well as the activated charcoal. So I want to make sure that I put this in to where the next layer which is my small gravel. We'll actually run that water in through the sand and not through the cloth that's sitting around the outside. And finally, my last layer, which is my large gravel. will sit right inside of that small gravel bucket. Now, these are one gallon containers. The problem I found is if I left it just like this, if I poured a gallon of water in it, the water slows down as it seeps through. And with the volume of a gallon of water plus the volume of what's in the buckets, they start overflowing the buckets. So what I did is I decided to throttle back on the flow of the water, and I got a fifth bucket with a simple 3 16 inch hole in it. 
That way, I set that right on top, and now I can pour the water into this bucket and let gravity do the rest of the work. As I said, there's a lot of variations of this that basically have you put all the material one on top of the other without these buckets. The advantage to this system is, if for instance, my sand layer becomes clogged up, I can remove the sand layer and I have more sand, I can replace the sand with clean sand, put it back into the system, reassemble my filter, and continue to filter water while I'm treating the sand that I've got to clean out, either dispose of it or rinse it out with clean water so I can use it again. That's the beauty of this system using the buckets, is you can clean out an individual layer. I might run so much water through this that I clog the sand up. I take it out, replace it with new sand, and I don't have to do anything to, to these other layers to clean them out. I can go ahead and reassemble it and keep working. The next time I might have to clean the sand and put in fresh activated charcoal. I can do that. I can take them out in layers, reassemble them in layers, and then continue to use my water filter. Now as you can imagine, I would be able to put a gallon of water in this. It takes about four to five minutes for it to filter through. I can go do something else. Put another gallon of water in it, let gravity do the work, I go do something else. Put another two or three gallons through this, and the next thing you know I've got this thing filled up, and I've got filtered water right here on tap. Now, one thing that's very important if you decide to do something like this. Wash your filter material. I just went down to the Home Depot and purchased the gravel and the sand out in their garden department. And I got so much of it that I was able to build four of these, plus I've uh, given the material to other preppers who want to build their own. We get together, I tell them what materials to buy, they buy them, we get together, I drill everything out for them, send them home with a complete system. So I've got plenty of gravel, I've got plenty of sand, and I've got plenty of activated charcoal still sitting un uh, ready to go in one of these filters but it's very important that you clean this stuff out before you need it. Build it first and clean out your materials. The reason being is they may say this stuff is washed, but it's not. If you try to use what the way it comes out of the bag, you're going to get very dirty water because you're going to be rinsing out all your filter material. All that stuff that's in it is going to come out and it's going to take a lot of water, especially the sand filter, to get this out. I forgot to mention, there's a reason I use these. Two reasons, actually. First off, because this is in the bottom of the bucket, this would not sit flat. You would have to balance it, and then you got a problem. So by using these things down here, they're taller, so this sits above this. The other reason is, if there's any small particulate matter that does make it through this filter, it will settle down into the space above this right here, hopefully. That's another reason why this valve is not clear down at the bottom. There's a little bit of space underneath it to provide for a little bit more settling of anything that might make it through this filter. And there you have the DIY sand filter. Again, I want to reiterate this, and I can't reiterate this strongly enough. This will not filter out biological matter, and it will not filter out chemical contamination. It will only filter out particulate matter, little bits and pieces of dirt and crud that are floating around in the water. It's not a perfect system. You may still see some very small particles floating around in your water, but this will get rid of a lot of the bigger stuff. It's very important that if you want to build one of these, you don't just go buy all the stuff and put it away. You buy the stuff, you prepare it all, you drill your holes, you measure out your sand and your gravel and your charcoal, that you get all your parts assembled, and then you test it. You want to actually do an all-up test. You want to assemble everything just like I've shown you, run some water through it, and see how well it works for you. You want to check for, fit, uh, for leaks. The last thing you want to do is, is assume that this is going to not leak. You put this in the bucket, you run some water through it, thinking, well, I'll just put some water in it and I'll let it run tonight and tomorrow morning I get the clean water out of it, and it's leaked all that clean filtered water out onto the ground. So test everything. 
when you buy this material, it says it's washed on the package, but it is not clean. You need to rinse this and rinse it and rinse it. I was amazed how much water it took, how much time and water it took to fill or clean all this material. It was amazing how much water and time it took. So don't think that you're just going to buy the bag of stuff, throw it in a closet, and then, well, I'll just take it out and start using it because it's an emergency now. You need to make sure this stuff is clean. So now is the time to take that time to clean it. As I said before, the beauty of this is because you are separating all your filter elements in these buckets, you can clean one of these systems out. You can clean one element out. So if my sand gets clogged up, I can take it out, put some clean sand in, continue to filter while I rinse out that dirty sand and get it ready to go, or just simply throw it out and replace it. That's the beauty of this system. The other beauty of it is if the emergency is over and you want to keep this system, you can take everything apart set it out in the sun, dry it out. I bought some cookie sheets at a local thrift store that I just put all this stuff in and just lay it out on the deck in the sun and in a couple hours it's all nice and dry. I can package it back up and put it away for storage for hopefully the, not the next emergency, but it will be ready. Another thing that's important to know is if you are using this either in a regular situation or an emergency situation, don't run some water through it and then just let it set for a long period of time. Because if you run se several gallons of water through it and then just let it set for a week or two, things could start growing inside of this. So either constantly use it or if you're not going to be using it, take the materials out and dry them out so you don't have those little creepy crawlies growing in your side of your water filter. It does take a little bit of maintenance to keep it going, but I think it's far worth it to have a couple of these like I do stashed away in a back closet. They all store in this much area just like that, ready to go. So this is Backpack Hat coming at you with this trail tip. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share my videos. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out on the trail.